I'm in um, Sydney Park, about 7.30 on a Wednesday morning, having just battled about two or three k's worth of traffic to get here. Um, people are driving really aggressively because there's so many cars on the road with just one person in them, right? But all these roads, and for every like truck that's trying to get somewhere with a load or to pick up a load, you've got like nine or ten cars with one person in them trying to get to work in that place just behind me, the city. And they're coming from all the way down there on this main road, right? So you literally got tens of thousands of people using a vehicle like a ton and all the petrol that entails just to get from down there all the way up there to work. This is how I'm getting to work today. Riding a bike through a beautiful park. Nice whip it. This is Euston Road that I'm standing on and this is really ground zero for um, West Connects in this area at least. This is the road that's going to be widened up to eight lanes wide of uh, free flowing traffic according to Duncan Gay. It's going to resume back to its regular uh, bandwidth so to speak about a kilometre or so down that way when it hits Burke Street which is already at capacity. The question is, if you widen the road down here but it goes back to normal at the other end How's that going to help the flow of traffic? And this strip just behind me is the strip that belongs to the RMS up to the front of that building there. Right here is where this eight lane highway is going to be. Now it starts at the interchange about or maybe 200 metres down that way. It travels a kilometre or so up that way, eight lanes, but then it just narrows back to its regular size, joins the roads up there that are already at capacity, and that's why it's not going to work. I mean, tell me how that's going to work. You can't overflow traffic, you know, you can't just ram it in. I just had a chat to someone, one of the protesters then, who asked not to be on camera. And they pointed out that they're not trying to cost these workers their, their jobs. They're not trying to stop people from doing their work, you know. But that's not what it's about. It's about dodgy, second-rate, rushed, badly designed projects being shoved through because there's this pot of gold at the end of this concrete rainbow, right? And it's becoming more and more clear that the alternatives haven't even been explored. You know, alternatives like public transport, reducing the amount of vehicles on the road, especially those driven by a single occupant, just to get to work. And all sorts of reasons why this project is just dodgy, it's second rate, poorly conceived, you know, I mean, look at Duncan Gay. You know, I don't think he's really pushing the bell curve when it comes to forward thinking and intelligence. Sorry, Duncan, but, mate. Now, I just had a chat with um, Inspector Wolseley down there. I thought it was someone else at first, but no, it's Wolseley. What did he say? It's only going to get worse. Inspector of Police, Redfern, Site Commander, his take on it, it's only going to get worse. So right behind me here, this is a spot where the actual interchange is going to be, right? Huge concrete ramps funneling 70,000 vehicles a day onto these streets, right? Now this street behind me, this is Campbell Road, it's going to be widened to six lanes with pedestrian access, cycleways, all the way down there across the canal. It's going to hit the bottom of Burke Road, which is already at capacity, right? Which is another about maybe a kilometre past what you can see down the end there. Now, the whole point of this project and this interchange is selling it as something that's going to increase freight efficiency to get to Port Botany about six days that way and the airport. My question to you is uh, how are you going to get trucks like that down through the bottleneck of 
Burke Road, but that's already at capacity. Doesn't matter if you widen this to six lanes, widen it to 12 if you want. They'll have a nice run down at Burke Road, and then they're back in exactly the same position. Tell me how it's going to work. Now I'm in trouble. And I suppose I should mention just before I wrap this up, my personal feelings, you know, I ride a bike to work. It's much more enjoyable. I try to live locally. And I would much rather this than that any day.